Conditions hang around for a sixth day. Lise Finch has more on this blustery weather that just won't quit. He spoke, you know, always smiling. You know, not a violent kid or anything like that. An unspeakable tragedy in New Jersey. A teenager accused of gutting down his family during a New Year's Eve party. Plus, increasing unrest in the Middle East. 12 people dead after protesters take to the streets in Iran. You're watching WLNY TV 1055 News at 9. Good evening, I'm Dick Brennan. And I'm Jessica Moore, and for Alice Gaynor, welcome to the News at 9. We begin with the bone-chilling weather that still has its grip on our area. Now, temperatures have reached the single digits some days. Elise Finch is in Filani tonight, and Elise, everybody's hoping for some relief <laughs> anywhere. Now, so here's the good news. There is some relief. It just doesn't come soon. Oh, right? So we have okay. to wait a little bit for it, and things actually get worse before they get better. First up, I want to talk about, of course, New Year's Eve ball drop. We were talking about that temperature, and the National Weather service they, they tweeted it out nine degrees was the temperature when the ball dropped that now puts us in second place as the second coldest ball drop temperature the first one a hundred years ago in 1917 so incredibly cold of course it felt colder with the wind chill as we take a look at low temperatures this morning seven degrees in central park zero for the hamptons two below in newburgh six below for both sussex new jersey and monticello these were the high temperatures yeah Highs, highs, folks. In the teens, couldn't even get a 20 degree reading, not even in Central Park, which is typically one of the warmest locations. So a full 20 degrees below where we should be. Right now, these are the temperatures. You can see we've got a, still a lot of teens and quite a few single digit temps out there. You head to Newburgh, uh, Andover, Monticello at three, Danbury registering one below as its current temperature. Same with the wind chills. So I guess there's the good news with that. It feels like 10 degrees in Central Park, five in Farmingdale and Montauk. It feels like eight below in Monticello. It feels like four degrees in Edison, New Jersey. So the dangerously cold air continues. And of course, overnight, we're talking about a 13 degree temperature. But I mentioned it gets worse before it gets better. And there's also snow. I'll talk about both coming up in just a little bit. Dick. All right, Elise, thanks very much. Well, despite the dangerous cold temperatures, hundreds of swimmers jumped into the frigid ocean at this year's Coney Island polar bear plunge. As TV 1055's Mark Liverman explains, emergency workers were on hand and ready just in case. The plunge is on. It's too warm out here. That's the problem. Well, that might be a bit of an exaggeration. It's invigorating. It's absolutely invigorating. It's very easy to get in. It's really difficult to get out. John Sattler taking the polar plunge with hundreds of others in the Atlantic Monday. Everyone here at the start line just trying to keep moving, just trying to stay warm on one of the coldest New Year's days ever in our area. Today's high in the teens for most of the tri-state area. Perfect weather for a swim. Were you worried about the uh, hypothermia risk? Not at all, not at all. And as soon as the plunge is done, this is where everyone comes to get warm as quickly as they can. I met my family and friends handing off towels, blankets, whatever they can do to get warm fast. Other polar plunges have been canceled because of the bitter blast, including one in Ocean City and Ventnor, New Jersey. At least one person was rushed away in an ambulance here, but it wasn't clear if they actually participated in the event. It's definitely a risk on a day like today. Today is brutal. Organizers say water temperatures hovered between 35 and 40 degrees. That's nothing compared to the air you're slammed with as you come out of the water. So first responders were standing by and organizers tried to warn every participant. Well, you know, hypothermia, sometimes you get confused. So you need to have somebody around that could look out for you. With sub-zero wind chills, some of the plungers got cold feet and skipped out. Organizers say attendance was lower than other years. In Coney Island, Brooklyn, Mark Liverman, TV 1055. The event has been a tradition since 1903. A 16-year-old boy in Monmouth County, New Jersey, is facing murder charges accused of killing his parents, his sister, and a family friend. Investigators say the victims were shot to death during a New Year's Eve party. TV 1055's Lisa Rosner spoke exclusively with a relative. Relatives say 44-year-old Steve Kologi and his wife, 42-year-old Linda Kologi, were hosting a New Year's Eve party at their Long Branch home on Wall Street. Just before midnight, neighbors down the street heard gunshots. You looked outside and before you know it, cop down here, cop down there, lined up around the street. The Monmouth County prosecutor says around 11.45 p.m., the Kologi's 16-year-old son fatally shot them, his 18-year-old sister, Brittany, and his grandfather's girlfriend, 7-year-old Mary Schultz, 
of Ocean Township. The grandfather and a brother were home but unharmed. We will be charging this individual with uh, four counts of murder and one count of uh, possession of a weapon for an unlawful purpose. The prosecutor says the suspect used a Sentry Arms semi-automatic rifle legally owned by another family member and the suspect did not have a criminal history. He spoke, you know, always smiling, you know, not a violent kid or anything like that. The mother's cousin, Walter Montelione, telling exclusively by phone there were never any red flags. Heartbroken childhood friends of Steve Kologi say the father of four worked overnight jobs to support the family. He always, he always had your back no matter what. You know, he always had your back. He loved his kids to death. He loved all his kids to death. Grief-stricken relatives still trying to come to terms with the New Year's nightmare. Why did he do that to my cousin? Why would he give us no brother? Police tell us the suspect surrendered without incident. His name is not being released because he is a minor, but he's expected to make a first court appearance tomorrow. Meanwhile, a GoFundMe page has been set up to help pay for funeral expenses for the family. In Long Branch, New Jersey, Lisa Rosner, TV 1055. New Yorkers came together in a big way to help survivors of that fire that killed 12 people at an apartment building in the Bronx. Boxes were stuffed to the brim and bags were overflowing with necessities at a coat clothing drive at the Church of St. Martin of Tours in the Belmont section. The NYPD's Community Affairs Bronx Outreach Team helped coordinate the effort. The family and the victims not only lost loved ones at such a terrible time of the year, they lost everything. So they have to start from the beginning. And we want to be there to help them. Tragedies like these, no one planned for them. And this could happen to anybody. There's been such an overwhelming response from the community that the NYPD canceled a second clothing drive. More unrest in Iran tonight. The government says 12 demonstrators and a police officer have died in five days of protests. President Trump is also weighing in, and local residents who emigrated from Iran are watching closely. TV 1055's Tony Aiello is here with more. Tony. Dick, Iranian State TV says most of the deaths happened when protesters tried to storm military bases and police stations. It is the boldest challenge to the Islamic Republic in all almost a decade, and the government is struggling with how to respond. Government television showed a burning building, a burned out car, and other damage from demonstrations in numerous cities. The cause of the unrest is complex. Most demonstrators are young, angry about corruption, unemployment, and inflation. Others seem to want regime change, setting fire to pictures of Iran's Islamic Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, and shouting death to the dictator. The event's 6,000 miles away of keen interest in Great Neck, Nassau County, where hundreds of Iranian Jews relocated after the Islamic Revolution in 1979. Where we left are our lives, properties, homes, Family. This woman, Sharona, asked that we not use her last name. Watching the protests, she says her heart breaks for young Iranians demanding basic democratic rights and better futures. It's just sad. I feel sad for them. I feel bad for them because they have no future. They are poor. They have no freedom. They are a generation that are innocent and they went through lots of economic hardship. So I wish them the best. You have millions of Iranians. Uh, who want, desperately want, a free, stable, democratic Iran. President Trump woke up with Iran on his mind, tweeting early this morning, the great Iranian people have been repressed for many years. Along with human rights, the wealth of Iran is being looted. Time for change. What do you think President Trump should do? I think so what he's doing right now, that's okay. Showing support. Yes. Sharona, who fled Iran in 1979, offered this New Year's wish for the country. A year of hope, of prosperity, of freedom, of good life for all of them. Iran's president is defending the right of people to demonstrate peacefully, but also blaming the U.S. and Israel for provoking the protests. Prime Minister Netanyahu called that, quote, laughable. He said the protesters are heroes. Dick, Jessica.
All right, Tony, thanks very much. Well, it was so cold today, Mayor de Blasio kept his speech short at the inauguration for a second term. But now he's taking some heat. TV 1055's political reporter Marsha Kramer has that story. Friends, family, and supporters shivered under blue blankets supplied by City Hall as Bill de Blasio was sworn in for his second and last term in office. Please raise your right hand. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders did the honors, and then de Blasio began his second term with a move supporters will call a kiss, detractors a kiss off. His speech cut think? short by the bone-numbing cold. I can do a very brief speech if you prefer. In some 13 minutes okay. at the podium, the mayor talked about his success in reducing crime, the need to create affordable housing and jobs, the pride of being from New York. Being a New Yorker means not being held down or pulled back by the sad bonds of history. The festivities were dramatically pared down from four years ago. A much smaller crowd, fewer dignitaries. Governor Cuomo turned down the invitation in order to swear in the new Nassau County executive. Governor Cuomo wasn't here, but he sure found a way to make his presence felt. There is no reason you have homeless people on the street in 2018. There's no reason, but you choose not to do anything about it. Cuomo's comments yesterday, which zeroed in on one of the failures of de Blasio's first term, reverberated at the inauguration, where they appeared to be echoed by controller success. Scott Stringer. Sobering challenges remain. Tonight, in sub-zero conditions, more than 62,000 New Yorkers will sleep in homeless shelters, 24,000 are our children. The homeless population hovered around 50,000 when de Blasio took office. But although in recent years Cuomo has increased state aid, budget gaps in 2011 forced him to cut funds for a popular rental assistance program designed to get the homeless out of shelters. Building as many as 90 new shelters remains one of the biggest challenges for de Blasio's mayoralty. At City Hall, I'm Marcia Kramer, TV 1055. The crowd that braved the deep freeze to ring in the new year last night in Times Square left behind a lot of trash. Moments after midnight, sanitation crews moved in. TV 1055's Janelle Burrell shows us what it takes to clean up after one of the biggest parties in the world. Hours and hours of manpower with crews working by hand and with the help of machines. Cleaning up the final traces of the one and a half tons of confetti. The Department of Sanitation leading the brigade in and around Times Square. 246 sanitation workers, 46 officers, talking equipment. We use 45 rear loader collection trucks, 30 mechanical brooms, 58 personnel with backpack blowers, and 58 personnel with, with actual hand brooms. It's a lot of work. Oh, it is. Sanitation Deputy Chief Jeff Pitts says the moment the ball dropped when the clock struck midnight, as the hundreds of thousands of revelers filed out, their teams were already assembled, waiting to move in. It's not just the initial cleanup that sanitation crews have to worry about. The wind makes their job challenging as well. We get gusts of winds that, that blow the residual confetti from the roofs, so we have to keep constantly recapping the area. What time did you get here? Uh, noon. Yesterday. Noon yesterday. When it's all over, some of the production crews breaking down the many stages of equipment will have been working for more than 24 hours straight. Oh, this is one of the coldest years. Definitely one of the coldest years. The second coldest year on record for a New Year's celebration in Times Square with a temperature hovering around 9 degrees. So for these guys to survive the elements, dressing is strategic. Just layers. <laughs> layers. <laughs> and that was key for the brave revelers who stood in the numbing, frosty temperatures. And was it worth it? It was worth it, and I'll never do it again. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> A celebration to ring in 2018 that he's sure to never forget. In Times Square, Janelle Burrell, TV 1055. Well, coming up, a community that remembers a family killed in a plane crash in Costa Rica. Beautiful kids, intelligent, smart. Tonight, what we're learning about the victims after a family vacation ends in tragedy. An historic day in California, the purchase that had hundreds of people lining up. Plus, travelers who were once basking in the sun, now bundling up, how they're dealing with the extreme cold gripping our area.